everyone. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through how to tile pattern pieces together in Inkscape. Um, and I'm going to first show you which pattern we're going to be piecing together. This is for Mood Society. Um, up here you can see it's called the Onella Blouse. And these are all of the uh, pattern tiled pages. So there are 32 pieces that need to be tiled together. And I'm going to show you how to do that in Inkscape. Okay, so first let me just minimize this. And let's see. So I'm in Inkscape now. And I'm going to go ahead and start importing the pages. So to bring pattern pieces into Inkscape to make adjustments to them or to tile them together from A4 to AO, you have to import said pieces. Um, for using, um, to use Inkscape to tile pieces together from A4 to AO, you actually have to import each A4 size sheet into one Inkscape um, page. So I'm going to hit the import button. You can also hit control I. I'm going to go ahead and select the Onella blouse. That's what we're going to be working on. And then you're going to see this page that pops up. Um, you can see here that uh, there are 33 pages in this PDF. Um, we're actually going to skip the first page because this one is just um, to show you the complete tiled page, like what I showed you uh, just a few moments ago in uh, Adobe. So I'm going to hit plus, and here you can see that the first tiled page is actually page two, but it's the first tiled one that we'll need to import. Um, unfortunately, there isn't a way to just import all 32 pages that we need. Um, we'll have to do them one by one. But thankfully, this is still much less annoying and frustrating than having to print all 32 pages out and then having to tile them together manually with either tape or glue or staples or <laughs> whatever uh, methods that you've done before uh, for printed PDFs. So now that this is selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Um, it's going to take a second. There's my first page. I'm actually just going to leave it there because we have a lot of pieces to tile together. Um, you can scroll up a little if you want to. And then I'm going to hit Control i and select the Onella blouse. And now we have to look for the second page. Okay, so it gives you a little preview. You always want to make sure that you're bringing in the correct tile piece um, just to avoid extra steps. So this looks like the correct thing. I'm going to hit OK. Great, there it is. So now you can start actually tiling your pieces together. You notice that um, the arrow will look like a normal arrow in some places, but you want it to have that little cross beneath it so that you're actually moving the piece. If you click it while it does not show that little piece, it will actually deselect the piece and then you'll have to go and select it again. So just be mindful of that. Okay, cool. So it snapped into place. Um, to make sure that things snap into place, you want to make sure that you have this guy, this button over here selected, snap nodes, paths, and handles. And that just allows the nodes on the pattern page or the pa pattern selection to snap together so that they are kind of like magnets. They want to um, stick to each other. Okay, so again, control I. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I have all of the pages that I need snapped together. Okay, so there's number three. Okay. There it is. Make sure that I have my little hover icon. Grab it. Ah, I selected the wrong one. <laughs> so if that happens, you can go ahead and just let it go. Hit edit. Undo move. And that'll put it back to where it was. But now I can show you... Um, how to select this guy again. So you can just wait for the arrow to have the, the selection um, icon next to it and then you can just click on it and it'll grab it. Um, another way 
that you can also select things in Inkscape is make sure that you have this icon selected. And if you click anywhere outside and like collect an object, it'll go ahead and select uh, the entire thing for you. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and continue. I believe this pattern page is eight pages across, which, oh my gosh, if I were having to do this manually with sheets of paper, eight pages across and four pages down, that's a whole lot of paper. I don't know about you, but I don't have time for that. <laughs> that's just too frustrating, too annoying. I don't have the workspace to get eight pages across, um, much less like floor space where my puppy won't, you know, want to eat said paper. Okay, snap. Ah, I missed it. You want to make sure that they snap in the right place. There you go. Okay, and let's hunt for page five. So Anella Blouse. Um, and the nice thing is that you do get this little preview so you can see the correct number um, because the page numbers get confusing otherwise. Okay, I have the little cursor thing. Drag it. It takes a second to move it around. And I have to imagine that's just because there's so much information that we're importing into the program. It just takes a moment for it to be able to move the pattern piece that we have selected around. But a little patience, it does eventually move it where we need it to go. Okay, so I'm down to the last few pages, um, and I just wanted to show you a couple of little things that I think are really helping move this along a little faster. Um, so I need tile piece number 31. I know that because they're offset by one, I just add one to the page number, hit enter, and there's 31. I can go ahead and click OK, and then it's going to import that. And I try to keep my frame relatively close to where I'm trying to add the page and it drops it almost where I need it. And so I click on it, move it, let it go. And I've noticed that because there's a bit of a, like a lag between the program working to move the piece, um, I've noticed that using um, really short little movements and letting it work and think um, actually helps it to move a little quicker as opposed to holding down your mouse uh, click and trying to move it around a bunch and like get it just right. That was taking a lot longer than doing it this way. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my little um, hover icon is next to the mouse cursor. Click on it, move it down and over, let go of the mouse click. Let it think. You can see the arrows have disappeared from around the object and boom, it's in place. So once the arrows reappear, that means that it's done thinking. You can go ahead and move on to the next thing. Kind of like in the um, last tutorial that I did with the um, blending of sizes where you have the layers and you can see the machine thinking, um, you want to give Inkscape, Inkscape a little bit of time to think about the movements that you're asking it to do and not overwhelm it with just a bunch of information. Okay, so I'm on to, I believe, let's see, yeah, the last piece. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, control import, 
or control I and then grab my last piece which is piece number 32 so I type in 33 hit enter there it is I can go ahead and click OK and pull and drag let go let it think actually I don't think it's thinking the arrows came back pretty quickly so I'm gonna try that again now you can see the arrows are gone it's thinking just let it do whatever it's gonna do until the arrows come back then I'm gonna go ahead and drag it again let go it's thinking okay so now that the arrows are back um, another thing that I've been trying to do is for um, tile pages that have um, broken pieces that connect them typically those are a little bit easier to connect because they're they're gonna want to snap there so I use those as references and I just kind of grab near one I need up and over just a bit let it go it's thinking and there you can see that it's snapped into place okay so all of my tile pieces are now all on the page um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a save because I've been uh, actually doing that here and there um, because I don't want to have Inkscape um, unresponsive and then just boot me out um, I had to scare um, maybe tile page like 11 or so and it just froze and said not responding um, and so when it came back from that I saved the piece for the first time and was like uh, just covering my bases because I would hate to do all of this work and then lose it so save along the way just to be on the safe side okay so now I'm going to go ahead and zoom out um, I'm gonna go ahead and type in 25% and see what that looks like and scoot over I just want to be able to see most of the page um, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out a little bit more okay not too far off from being able to see the entire page cool okay so now what I'm gonna do actually let me go out one more time now what I'm gonna do is with the cursor selected I'm gonna go ahead and select all of the pages like this it looks like it's ah it's not responding it's thinking about it okay now it's selected all of the pages and you can see that the workspace or the page size for the original Inkscape document is just slightly bigger than one tile size what we want to happen though is for that workspace to be inclusive of all the tile pieces so I've selected everything I'm going to come up here to file and I'm going to hit the document properties um, this page is really useful to resize the workspace and um, all I do is under this custom size option there's a resize page to content click on it and then you get all of these other options I just hit this resize page to drawing or selection since we already have um, the piece selected and let it think for a moment and we should see the page um, resize there we go so now the page is resized to this entire page um, which is great that's exactly what we were wanting and now we have ourselves a sheet of paper well it's not actually a sheet of paper but it's a workspace the size of all of our pattern pieces um, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can hover oh yeah we can awesome so you can see that um, now that we have all of the pieces tiled together when I clicked on the nodes button the nodes cursor we can go ahead and hover over a size and it will actually select an entire size for us of that pattern piece which is going to be really useful and helpful for um, projecting the piece 
but also for making any adjustments to the size. Um, you can reference my last video to see how you can blend pattern sizes um, and you can now take a tiled pattern piece, smoosh them all together, and then you can grab your pattern sizes. And if you're between sizes, you can go ahead and grab those two sizes and now make your adjustments so that you can make a custom sized pattern piece for whatever size you desire. Um, make those adjustments and then you can save that and project that as your own pattern piece. Isn't that exciting? All right, so last bit of um, information that I'm going to leave you with for this pattern page um, is going to be saving. So in the last video, um, I noticed that there were some issues with saving the way that I showed you how, which was the print, um, the print method. Um, so I'm going to show you another option today and it should be, it should work for you um, a little better than the other option did. So I'm going to go ahead and use the cursor. I'm going to select the entire workspace. Let it think for a moment. Now, once there's a lot of information in the software, it takes a minute to do each step. But again, I assure you that doing it on the computer this way is so much more time saving than having to print everything out, tape it all together and do all that nonsense, not to mention a lot more environment friendly this way. So I'm going to go ahead and um, now that it's thought about it and selected everything that's in the workspace, I'm going to hit file and then I'm going to hit save as and we can go ahead. I've already named it Onella with my um, <laughs> with my anxiety induced saving. Um, I've already named it Onella and what we want to do is um, if you didn't already save it in an SVG, um, this is just so that we can come back into Inkscape and make changes. So if you're going to come back and make custom sizes and things of that nature, um, you want to make sure that you have a version of it saved in SVG this way so that you don't have to come and um, do all of the tile pages together again. So actually, let's go ahead and just save it so that we have the final. Um, yes, we want to replace it. We're going to have uh, the the final version of this pattern piece with all of the tiled pages. I think the last one that I did was somewhere over here on page 26. So now I'm going to come back and save as again. And then I'm going to hit this button and come down to PDF. So we want to have a PDF version um, to project with. So if you've already made all of your uh, pattern adjustments and everything, or you're just going to use this as is, you can go ahead and um, save a PDF version. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. I don't tend to make any changes here. I just select OK. Great. Um, and then for testing purposes, I'm going to see what that looks like. So down here we have the Onella PDF, and we should be able to double click on that and Acrobat um, Adobe will open it up and this should look like what you will project with. Close all of these. My projection number 27.4 and then we can go into the live or excuse me full screen and this is what it should look like um, for your projecting now and that looks great. So we can move it around. Um, you should be able to rotate it as needed, make any, uh, put it in the area and direction that you want it to be in for cutting, and you're good to go. All right, I hope you picked up some uh, fun and useful tips for this video, and. Um, I will see you again next time if I learn another Inkscape thing. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great sewing day.